H&M is the official partner for season two of the Fashion and Color podcast, partnering with Harlem's Fashion Row for two years in a row for our Sustainability Summit. H&M is revolutionizing fashion by turning recycled materials into breathtaking, eco-conscious collections, such as Heron Preston, to reshape the fashion landscape through collaborative efforts like the H2 Collection. They are not just crafting clothes, they are crafting the future of fashion. I am here with mm-hmm. designer, businesswoman, entrepreneur, creative. <laughs> I mean, what else can I call it? It's, I feel like saying being like, she's not a, she don't have a business man. She's a business <laughs> man. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, thank you so much for being with me, Andra Duncan, Thanks. who is the founder of Andra Celeste New York, a Thanks. women's wear brand. <laughs> Based in New York. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Brandis, for having me. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. First, how you feeling? Um, I'm feeling good. I'm good. It's a lot going on, but I'm gonna just just speak that and say I'm 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 well. I I'm love well. it. First of all, this outfit right here. Oh, a little I something. I love this, Andra. <laughs> the color, the thank fabric. You. Y'all can't see the fabric, but mm-hmm. it is absolutely. Beautiful. Thank you. It's from a fall collection coming up. I'm going to start with asking you, who is the person who have supported you most in your journey? Ooh, the person who has supported me most in my journey? Um, I would say my mom. <laughs> you know, it's like she's been my cheerleader. A lot of times I just be wanting to, you know, fold this whole thing in and and close up shop and she has really really um just you know always encouraged me and championed me to just keep going um if I was gonna say a you know second it would probably be you in HFR like you guys wow. have really been there you know from the very beginning so wow yeah wow. Thank you. <laughs> and and I know a little bit about your mom's journey but I yeah. think that you got the entrepreneurship bug from her wasn't it I got the entrepreneurship bug from both of my parents okay. so growing up um, my family is from uh, Guyana okay. so you know I am first generation so my family my mom and my dad came here and of course they needed to work so they got jobs but they always had side hustles mm. my dad um, started like one of the first Caribbean magazines back in the 80s called Caribbean Digest and it used to be everywhere all over Brooklyn um, and then my mom was uh, you know she used to crochet she used to sell Mary Kay she used to like she was she was a side hustle queen because that's what you had to do so I did get that from them and then my mom and her sisters my aunts were actually the inspiration behind just my whole brand wow and I know you started out in handbags yes mm-hmm. and you made the switch and so I have to ask you about that because like handbags is a kind of like you don't have to worry about sizes mm-hmm. and all of that what was that switch like for you so that was my my thought process when I started. I was like, I always wanted to be an apparel designer, but I said handbags is like kind of like the little the entryway. Mm-hmm. And because you don't have, like you said, you don't need sizes, you you mm-hmm. need these things. But one of the things, particularly in um, New York, s- starting a handbag brand is kind of like starting a car company. <laughs> People in New York are very, and have been, I feel like now is not so much because we have, you know, great um, affordable handbag brands like, you know, like the Telfar and, um, and, and those, but back in that day, it was like, people were very handbag elite, like Mm. very elitist. Like if your bag wasn't recognizable, then it wasn't, you can't, you couldn't do it. So it was very hard for me to get a handbag line, even though I had some like amazing mentors, I had some amazing partnerships and we did, we did okay, but Mm -hmm. it it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't the thing. And we ended up having to shut the business down. And what was that like? Shutting it down? You know what? It wasn't as hard as, you know, people Mm. would think, because I feel like I'm, you know, you know me, I'm a very spiritual person. Like if something feels like forced and it doesn't feel natural and it doesn't feel good, mm-hmm. um, not to say that everything all the time has to feel good, right. but your spirit tells you when it's time to pivot and move yeah. on. I, I believe that. So um, the worst part about it is that we did have a lot of debt. So during that time, I was still, I still had um, my product development full-time mm-hmm. job. So, you know, I took a year off to 
to pay off some debt and then start it over yeah. with Andre Celeste. <laughs> Which is fine to yeah, do. It's right? absolutely Always fine, fine Always. to do. Always <laughs> fine to do. There are so many challenges. Yes. <laughs> and starting a business, period. Right? Period. Um, I don't care what kind of business it is. I don't care if you've got a cupcake shop. Uh, a, a handbag business, an agency, like there are just, the learning curve is so steep. It is. How, how have you been able to, because at this point, like you're sold in Saks, mm-hmm. you're sold in Bloomingdale's, yep. you sell online, you yep. now have your own boutique yes. in New Jersey. <laughs> yes. Um, Like what resources have you used yourself to kind of, I don't know what is it like to 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 keep get going. into it to keep going, <laughs> but then also to like educate yourself on what it is because you're not just a designer. That's why I said you're an entrepreneur, you're a businesswoman. Yeah, um, it, it's very important to educate yourself mm-hmm. as you go. Um, for me, I think I maybe just a little tiny bit ahead of the curve because um, I worked in corporate fashion for for mm-hmm. an, for like a decade prior to starting my business, and I also worked in product development, which mm-hmm. really I feel like is one of the biggest things that serves my my brand. But on the business side. Um, I did go to business school, um, mm-hmm. I'm, and I'm not going to say like that completely prepares you, um, yeah. but I did go to college. I went to Howard, and you have to have the mindset that you don't know what you don't know, yeah. and you have to seek mentorship, and you have to read, and you do have to go to conferences, and you have to speak, you know, sit at the the the, the feet of people who have done it before and listen, yeah. right? And you have to... Um, at the end of the day, I think with entrepreneurs, you have to go with your your instinct yeah. and what does feel good. Again, I also, I always tie everything back to my faith, and I, you know, I have opportunities that come to me, and then you it's it's a lot of times like you don't know what you don't know, so you have to constantly, constantly be seeking seeking advice, seeking education, seeking God, seeking wisdom, <laughs> seeking wisdom. <laughs> wisdom. Um, I talked about some of the challenges. Like, can you walk us through one of the stories of, you know, what do they call it? What is it? Dark, dark, the dark night of the soul or something <laughs> they call it for, for, for entrepreneurs. Uh, the the moment in which, like, it, it was a pivotal point for you to decide, like, do I keep going? Or, you know, and I know we have those moments all the time every day. But, That's like, cool. was there, what was the moment for you where you felt like I really had to decide, make a decision, or mm-hmm. the decision was made for me to continue moving forward? Okay. So a lot of my conversation is going to sound like a, a church testimony, and yeah, I'm okay with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go with <laughs> it. I'm okay with that. Um, it was during the pandemic. Mm. Uh, during the pandemic, I, um, just like everybody else, business went from, you know, chucking along, chucking along to a complete screeching halt. Mm. Um, And I, you know, there were people in my life who told me, like, this is the opportunity to get out. Like, Mm. you're doing too much. You need to come out. You need to stop. This doesn't make any sense. And um, there were two things, big things that happened during that time. So one of the things is that out of nowhere, um, and I did a lot of, like, praying because Mm -hmm. at this point, Prior to the pandemic, you know, I would say that my business made a living wage. Like, Mm -hmm. I I was completely just online and social media, but I was getting orders consistently every day and shipping product. And, you know, this was prior. And like I said, chucking along, um, enough, doing enough to Mm -hmm. to keep me going, pay my bills. Um, Pandemic hit, everything came to um, a standstill. Um, One evening, as I'm, you know, kind of really struggling with this should I should we just close like this like if we close now a lot of businesses are closing no one will really right. even notice so mm-hmm. it's like really good time to do it if you're going to do it and um the Huffington Post had uh posted an article on the website now I'm not even really like a Huff- I didn't really read the Huffington Post like that to be honest and it said um the five most fashionable face masks and I remember I was in Jersey Shore at the time um, by the pool, and I just saw my phone going ping, 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 hundreds, and I'm not exaggerating, hundreds of orders for a face mask that I had 
made for myself. And what I also did, my um, cousin was working at a nursing home and she told me that they needed face masks. I was like, okay, I'll, you know, download a pattern from the internet. And I made about 10 of them. And then I kept one for myself and I took a picture and I put it on my website. Didn't promote it. I don't even think I put it on social media. And for whatever reason, they found it. And within the next week, I literally had to turn my living room into like a little sweatshop. Wow. And this is while I'm contemplating qu quitting. Wow. So I was like, okay, I'll take it. But again, um, just maybe a little bit of doubt in me is like, this is all going to be over soon. Like, I mm -hmm. need a very clear message. So later that year is when um, Icon360 had posted about the million dollars that Vogue donated and that you guys were giving out. And I remember I, you know, obviously I applied for it and I said to God, this was a real prayer. I said, Lord, if I, if you want me to continue, I need to get the 50 or the 100. I should have just said the 100 to be honest. <laughs> but I, real true story. I said, I have to, if I get 25, if I get $49,999, I'm shutting down. I said, and I said that to him. And I wow. said, I will use that as my, and I told people too. So, wow. because, you know, when you tell people, it's like, you got to you hold it, you know, they, they hold you to the fire. So I said, yeah, if I don't get 50 or 100, I'm closing. If I get the 25, I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to pay off some bills and I'm going to move on with my life. Um, and I remember right up until, because you had called everybody to tell them, you and like, I guess your team had called, mm -hmm. was calling everybody. And right before I said, Lord, this is it. Like, I'm serious. If this doesn't happen, you know, this is it. And of course I got the 50. Wow. <laughs> of course I got the 50. And that was my sign to keep going. And ever since then, um, my journey, you know, when I talk about it personally, on a you know one on one, I always say it's a faith walk mm -hmm. because stuff like that has happened to me time and time again. Wow. Um, even my first, maybe I shouldn't be sharing all this, but <laughs> no, my first, uh, my first order with sex. Um, I remember again just going to the Lord and praying, and I was in my office. Like I said, we were we were doing okay. We were shipping orders every day to customers, making you know a little money to do what we needed to do, pay our bills, um, and was fine. And so when um, the sex thing came, things were getting tight, <laughs> and I and I remember I had met. That day, I held market. It was virtual. And Saks was, I think, the last one that I had met with. And I, um, two or three other retailers had said, okay, you know, we love what you're doing. We'll come back again next season. We love, And that's what they say, and that's fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wasn't taking any of it personally. But then I said, okay, God, here I am. It's me again. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, not only do I want Saks, but it has, but my first order, I don't know who I thought I was, <laughs> has to be over 100K. Mm. Um, that first order was 103. When I tell you I almost fainted. Wow. <laughs> it was 103. And it was obviously more than I probably could have handled, but it was exactly what I asked for. And it, from that moment, from the, well, honestly, from the moment of the, from the, getting the Icon 360 grant, um, I just knew it, I have to keep going because wow. for some reason, I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> wow. So, what but those, yeah. What inspired your faith? Where'd that come from? Um, What inspired my faith? Like, does it come from your childhood? Like, where? I didn't grow up having, I think what inspired my faith is faith. It's like, it's like you take a you take a step, you take one tiny step, and then you see God show up in a small way. You take mm -hmm. a bigger step, you see Him show up in a medium way. You take big leaps. You, I mean, the, the faith is is based on the the faith of the faith of God showing up in your life is based on the leaps you take, mm. right? So if you're taking little tiny steps, and I always tell people because you know 
people of faith always, you know, like, oh, I'm praying to bless my food and travel in mercies. Well, if that's what you pray for, the guy's going to do it. Right. <laughs> he's going to get you where you got to go. Right. And he's going to bless your food. Make sure you don't get poisoned or choked. Uh-huh. But what else are you What else are you willing to believe him for? Mm, that's so good. And what so else I've, are you willing to believe him for? And I've been him pushing for? him the whole time. And, he, you know, he shows up every time. I love what else are you willing to believe him for. Right. That's so good, that's, Andra. That's, that's, that's so good. That's so good. <laughs> I mentioned um, several of the things that, Mm -hmm. you know, you have going on, but I I feel like our special moment was really when we did the collaboration with Nike and LeBron James. And I remember that show. I remember how hard it Mm -hmm. was for all of you guys. You came in, I think, like weeks before the show started. And and we kind of all struggled through that. Very much so. And Mm -hmm. so that moment for me actually that was my breaking point that event that event was my breaking point yeah I know I heard the story and and yeah and so that call for me was that was my like that was my god nod to know Mm -hmm. okay wow like a company like Nike is actually considering a partnership with Harlem's fashion Mm -hmm. role what was that moment for you it was a. It was just another wow moment. I mean, that I feel like that was like one of the first because that was in 2018, right? Right, 2017 when 20, we got the call. We, yeah, 2017, and it it was it was one of those things that on the flip side where I am now, where I'll go and I'll pray and ask for God. Like I didn't ask for that. Like mm-hmm. that was like in that point of my life and career. Like I, my mind wouldn't fathom to even. Like, how do you ask for something like that? But I also think that that collaboration, that experience, because we did really struggle through that, like that having to put together a collection and then, you know, we had to like make garments for for like the family and stuff. It was it was a stretch financially. Mm-hmm. Like it was it was hard. But I I think it was necessary for where God was not only taking HFR but just my brand and the other um, and Kimberly and Fee like it 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 was it was our it was our springboard like and come even coming out of that um, we often like have these conversations where we felt like the impact for our brands would have been a lot bigger than what we perceived it to be after it. Like, you know, like we all were going to be like worldwide, internationally known designers and that didn't happen. But when we look back on it, we see that it was definitely a seed. It was a seed mm-hmm. for a really awesome sisterhood and friendship between mm-hmm. the three of us. It was a seed for us to um, just come out of it and know how to, that what's possible, mm-hmm. how to, like, there was so many lessons out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, what we thought it was going to be probably did not um, materialize in the way that we thought it would, but everything else that we needed in order for us to go forward, yeah. I think, started with that collaboration. Yeah, it's it's um, it's always amazing, right? Because mm-hmm. a lot of times you do think, oh, I'm going to do this collab with this brand, because mm-hmm. we've had those experiences. Right. And that's about to like that's take it. me I'm into going, the <laughs> I'm off into the stratosphere, <laughs> right? But I think that's any artist, even right. if you think about musical artists yeah. who've done like amazing things. They've had a collab with like a Stevie Wonder and they like, this is about to this and then it. two years later, you know what I mean? It's so like it just <laughs> it it is um it's it's like you have that experience. And but it all leads to something. It all it's all a yeah, part of the it's journey. It's all like a like a breadcrumb leading you to like the next thing. Right. The next thing. Um, I love that, Andra. So the faith step came from actually like taking steps. Of you gotta faith, take the steps. Seeing God show up, then going Doing like I can take one. a bigger step. I can take a bigger step. And then I'm the leap. Yeah, I'm the leap. <laughs> I know you also mentioned in February there was something that came last February, I think, or September, was it? September. The UPS? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That came that you weren't expecting. And how does that come expecting. about? Um, again, it was, I, um, I've i always wanted to, you know, do New York Fashion Week in the big way. Um, and I said I was going to do it in year 10. So I was uh-huh. waiting. I wasn't stressing about doing a show again. Um and so I, um, it was my cousin who mm-hmm. sometimes works with me, and she was actually my business partner when I, when we had the handbag line, and she, uh, you know, every now and again works with me. So anyway, she got an email from from to her under Celeste, which is funny because she has an under Celeste email, but she hardly ever checks it. Like mm-hmm. it's 
like random that she checked it and she saw this email from mm-hmm. UPS and she goes and she forwards it to me and she's like, well, did you see this? I was like, no. She was like, well, you know, um, they're looking for designers of color and, you know, just apply. And then I think it might have, the deadline might have been like two days. Mm-hmm. And so I, I did apply and then on, because I'm this person, I read all the fine print, mm-hmm. like when they're going to be contacting me. <laughs> and, um, I remember the day that they said that the, the, the winners would be announced. They mm-hmm. weren't, um, I didn't hear anything. And I was like, this can't, can't be right. Um, and so, because, um, I know, I know, well, people at IMG, I like just emailed, I was like, Hey, hey guys, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know me, I'm follow up. And so they said that they had pushed it back. They had pushed the date where they were making, they were reaching out to the winners and I ended up getting it. It was like the easiest thing. And it was such an amazing experience working with UPS yeah. and IMG. Like they really threw the bag at that show. Um, I, you know, my 10 year show, which I still plan on doing. I don't know. When how you turn 10? In two years. We okay. just turned eight in okay. February. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah. So I'm like, I'm hopefully, I don't know how we're going to top that, but. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do you know because it, uh, it's like you get spoiled because yeah, you know yeah. it was it was it was crazy like the stylist who who styled the show the next day she had to go and style Louis Vuitton show the wow. you know Sir John did the makeup Yusuf wow. did the hair that's Rihanna's hair stylist it, it was it was just everything right it right, was everything right. and I just was like wow thank you Jesus because right. I really wasn't expecting that um but it was it was really really amazing I love that There are, you know, one of the things that we've been trying to encourage people to do is really shop designers of color, right? And um, I will tell you, I had some women in L.A. take a closet challenge. Oh. uh And so, like, really say, okay, I'm going to dedicate, like, this percentage of my closet to to black designers. That's dope. What are some of the challenges that still exist for designers of color? Uh. You mean on the re- you mean on the you, retail and consumer side on the okay well on the designer side I start there it's still money yeah it's still like you know it it's still money <laughs> <laughs> I mean a lot of your favorite brands um, that are non black brands are backed by a lot of money it mm-hmm. makes in this industry it makes a huge difference mm-hmm. um, I think on the consumer side I do think people are are, are, are more aware I think we, after um, kind of like the whole reckoning in in 20 uh, 20 to 2020 um, people are more aware that there are some really amazing black designers that deserve to be in our closet just as much as anybody else. I feel like there's still um, a lot of work to do there but I think people are getting more conscious of it mm-hmm. um for on the retail side <laughs> <laughs> how much time you got on the retail side um you know coming out of 2020 i think a lot of it was performative mm-hmm. i do however i always say that if you're performing and i'm getting paid then we're okay i'm okay with it <laughs> uh. I'm okay with it. The flip side to that is that the more we come away from that time, the more people go back into where they're comfortable. Mm. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of the things that were, uh, were the opportunities, I should say, that were given to us slowly being pulled back. They're Mm. slowly being pulled back and you can feel it. Um, and so it's, it's still a work that needs to be done. And you see even in, you know, in politics in this country, the whole, you know, diversity and inclusion, the whole idea of it yeah. being at, under attack. Yeah. So we're feeling it. Yeah. We're feeling it. Um, but, you know, you just got to keep going. <laughs> you, you, you keep going. Well, you you've going. done a phenomenal job. Oh, thank you. I still got to come shop the store. You do. We do. In come Newark, right? Newark, New Jersey. In yes. Newark, New Jersey. I still got to come shop the store. I love where you're going with the collection. Thank you. Anything you want to share in terms of what you have next? Oh, gosh. What do we have next? We've always got something. Um, of course, we have the store, which is in Newark, New Jersey. You can, you know, see all that on our social media. Of course, follow us at Under Celeste New York on all platforms. Uh, we have uh, Spring is Coming. So, of course, there's another there's a spring collection. Um, and, you know, we're just, like I said, this is a faith walk. We're just going forward. And wherever God takes us, we're going. 
And where can we shop the collection? Oh, under CelesteNewYork.com. You can shop it at Saks um, and Bloomingdale's. I love it. Yay. Thank you so much, Andre. This was Thank so much fun. Yes. Oh, and Andre is also featured in the Fashion and Color oh, book. Yes, yes. So I have to find your page real quick so find I can. Find my page. Here is Andre Celeste, New York. Yay. I love it. Love it. Um, and you were recently on, we launched a collaboration with HSN. So much and fun. And so what was that process like for you? HSN, the, the HSN process was really good. I actually really, I think out of all of the collabs, that was probably one of my favorites. Wow. I, I really, um, like my, like even from the beginning, the production partners that I had, they were really great. They allowed me to like, you know, do things that were probably not, you know, mm -hmm. in budget. <laughs> But um, I think it was so well received. Um, yeah. It sold really well. Um, that was my first time doing live TV and yeah. doing something like that. Everyone's telling me, oh, you should recreate it on your own. Right, like an HSN right. type of shopping experience. But nobody does it like HSN. Like right. it's, it was so, it was really, really, really just a really good experience. So thank you guys. For I that. love that. It yeah. was great. It was, it was fun so for much us too. Fun. It was, and we have more to come with HSN. Really? Thank you again, Andra, for yeah, being with thank us. You, this was Brandis so great. For having me. Thank Wonderful. you. <laughs> thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Fashion and Color Podcast. I want to thank our production partner, PVA Entertainment, the Harlem's Fashion Row team. Thank you so much for your support of Harlem's Fashion Row and for your support of designers of color. Please be sure to leave us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to share this with a friend. Welcome to the HFR movie.